Oh, okay. I am apparently live. Uh, yes, yes, I am live. Hello, everyone. How are you? Welcome to Lunchtime with Tom once again. Ham and cheese sandwich with Ruffles potato chips today. Today's episode is sponsored by probably number one on the list of foods that it's hard not to laugh when you hear the name of. Beanie Weenie. And I'll just leave it at that. And look at this. What a work of art this is. Don't you? I, I'm serious about my sandwich making, okay? Uh, the menu for today, in case you were wondering, even though nobody asked, raviolis. Chef Boyardee raviolis. I've bragged like three times already about my sandwich making. <laughs> what a life I have, right? I was I went to the trouble of actually fixing myself craft dinner. Or if you're having it at lunchtime, is it still craft dinner? One of those ex existential questions of the universe. Anyway, craft macaroni and cheese, as it's called properly here in the states, as well as uh, spam, cubed spam slices. Yes, I'm one of those weirdos who actually likes spam. What can I say? This is probably some. This is something that I just recently came up with, and I'm. I can sometimes be slow on the uptake, so it's probably something that everybody knows about. But I thought it was a new and wonderful thing, so you guys probably already know about it. And I'm fancying myself a total genius for thinking it up myself. <laughs> Quesadilla dogs is what I call them. A hot dog with a slice of uh, cheese. You know, one of those craft singles on top of it, rolled up into one third of a tortilla. What's on today's menu? I'm glad you asked, even though you didn't yet. Uh, a uh, Spam and cheese sandwich. One of my favorite uh, go-tos, although I haven't had it in a while. There's some favorites that you have, but that you just haven't gotten back to in a while. Hence this one. And Lay's potato chips. So what's everybody else had for lunch today? Thought I'd just throw that out there. Compare lunch notes. Unicorn-shaped macaroni without cheese. No. Macaroni without cheese, Ben, is just wrong. Completely. Fried egg sandwich. That's something I've never had. I've heard raves about fried bologna sandwiches, too, but I've never had any of those. My mother had fried bologna sandwiches when she was a kid, and she loves them. Toast with ramen noodles, potato chips, and chili? I don't know, Noah. <laughs> know, maybe that's just an Oklahoma thing. I don't know. It's hard to eat sauce with a spoon. I don't know if you've uh, had that experience yourself. but Or, excuse me, with a fork. Yeah. This is a fork. Education time. Oh, you're having your lunch. Well, this truly is lunchtime with Tom then, isn't it? I should make all you guys wait until... 11.30 Pacific time to have your lunch on Wednesdays so that we can all truly have lunch time with Tom. And yes, the potato chip crunch. This one's for you, Ryan. Come on, people, join in. Make this a party. It is another gorgeous day out here in Oregon. It's just, the weather has been crazy mild this summer. Wonderful. It's, it's going to be very nice that uh, in that we're going to have probably a pretty mild fire season or a short fire season anyway, because we actually live way out in uh, in a rural area surrounded by a bunch of trees. So that's one reason why I don't like summer, because with summer comes fire season and trees catch fire. Did you know that? Anyway, <laughs> that's our science minute. One of the biggest and most impressive and eye popping stores is Amoeba Music in uh, Hollywood. Well, actually, I've been to two out of the three Amoebas, uh, San Francisco and Hollywood, and they are freaking amazing. The San Francisco one is hid housed in what used to be a bowling alley. So that kind of gives you an idea of how big it is. And the one in Hollywood, which they actually closed up and they are moving. They're going to be leasing a new space, but they're currently closed. But the one down in uh, Hollywood took up an entire city block. So that was... Uh... Oh, yeah. Uh, House of Records was closed yesterday in support of uh, 
Blackout Tuesday. So that was very amazingly uh, supportive of them, even though that's the only day I go into town to work that week. And I was looking forward to picking up a CD that day. If the inconvenience of not being able to pick up a CD is my biggest complaint, then uh, I don't have a whole lot to worry about, do I? And so you guys kept asking asking questions, and I was able to interact with you and all that stuff. And here's a lame white boy dance move. Uh, and yes, I need a haircut badly. My hair is kind of doing this thing. Yeah. So I'm currently deliberating over whether to uh, use my lunch hour to get a haircut or to go to the record store. Huge decision. Major ethical dilemma. Huh? Oh, moral dilemma. I don't know. One of those. Yeah, take a walk. That was a good show, but I think the far superior version was Walk About, Talk About, which I saw once on YouTube a few months ago. Get ready for a lawsuit. Oh, yeah. I have better lawyers than Noah. Okay, I don't have any lawyers, but he doesn't either, probably. So, in a way, I do have better lawyers, better imaginary lawyers. My imaginary lawyers will be calling your imaginary lawyers. I'm thinking about doing uh, researching how to uh, share my screen so I can maybe do some. I, I don't know if I could do uh, tier lists or not. You guys would probably be bored to tears with <laughs> bored to tears. Get it? Um, yay homonyms with uh, the kind of tier lists that I would come up with. Anybody else got anything? This has kind of been a dead live chat, <laughs> a dead live chat. <laughs> oh, I, I've got a million of them. Trust me. We'll see if that comes uh, comes to fruition. <laughs> I've got fruit in my hand. See, that's a pun. That's half the well, not quite half the battle, but you know, a third of the battle. The A fractions. My focus of the discussion is a little more focused than that. Uh, yay words. Um, what can you do? You can't make everybody drop everything to come and watch you eat lunch. As exciting as that is, right? You ever notice that when I'm trying to think of something to talk about, I go like this? Nothing in particular is, is over here. I just look that way. Where was I going to go with that? I don't know. Um, what was I going to say? I can't even remember. I, was, I had a thought, and it's gone out the window. So yeah, Oops, sorry, let me do that. What was I going to say? <laughs> oh yeah, um, water. I'm going to drink some water. Drink some bloody water. Enjoy the ambient silence here while I read comments. ASMR. Today's ASMR crunch is brought to you by Ruffles. Sometimes I wonder if I could be a voiceover artist, you know, do commercials and stuff. I don't know. Or nature shows. This is the Alaskan Ridgeback. I don't know if that animal exists because I just made up its name. Smooth Jazz Radio Station. And now coming up, we have some other guy that plays saxophone over R&B beats. Enjoy. I, we watched the original Zeffirelli, Romeo and Juliet movie in school, and I was sitting there, blank, stared, eyes glazed over, not getting it. I watched it last year for the first time in forever, and it was I just totally got it. It's like uh, uh, you don't listen to the words that they're saying; you listen to how they're saying them, and it just it it's like it completely opened it up for me. And so it's it's weird to watch movies when you're young and then watch them, you know, 20 years later. Those of you who are too young to know what I mean, you'll be interested when it comes around. So uh, I'm all ears. Well, I'm eyes and nose and mouth too, but you know, there's my witty banter again. No matter where you go, there you are. Or if you haven't gotten to where you're going, you're not there yet. We don't care about no sheriffs or highway patrol going to drive as bad as we want to. That's my Western accent. 
Fear not, dear viewers. The live streams will not be going away permanently. You guys are so entertaining. How did I fall in with such an entertaining and fun group of friends? I, I, I was, I was kind of down about starting this live stream. I didn't want to do it, but you guys have lifted my spirits. Good on you. So yeah, I've been listening. The last few days, I've been listening to CDs, purging CDs. I come up with 30 or 40 in the last couple of weeks that I'm probably going to get rid of. And so that's one thing I've been listening to a lot of this week is CDs, you know, giving them one last listen. Do I want to purge them? Do I want to keep them? It's kind of funny. Some of the stuff that I think I'm going to get rid of, I decided to keep. And some of the stuff I think I'm going to keep, I end up getting rid of. Like all three albums by Semisonic or Semisonic, however you pronounce it was a band from the 90s. I really liked them for a long time. Looked at the CDs and didn't get any emotional reaction to them. Popped them in the other day, listened to them, and yeah, I guess I've outgrown them. But you'd never, if I hadn't picked it up again, given it another, another try, I wouldn't have known if it was going to stick this time. Sometimes they stick, sometimes they don't. That's, that's that little thing we call life, you know. And the process never really stops that uh, of me thinning out my CD collection. Of course, I add just as much into it, new stuff into it, as I take out of it. So it's not really getting any smaller, which defeats the purpose. But uh, what can you do? I see it as trimming the fat and adding in new stuff that you really enjoy is adding muscle. Pressure Chief by Cake. I've really gotten into Cake. I like Cake. And the band, too. Ricky Martin. Vilva. I thought only women had those. Anyway. For non-blondes. <laughs> yes, I can speak. Um, this is their one and only album. Uh, bigger, be bigger, Better, Faster, More. And I did not realize until less than a couple of years ago that uh, Linda Perry was part of this band. That's one thing that's slightly embarrassing, but not really, is how much I don't know about music and how many groups I've never heard of. But that's one thing about music and about life in general is if you don't have anything new to learn, what's the point? You know, why do you Canadians do weird things like put milk in bags? I, of course, when you think about it, that's how, that's the type of container in a way that nature puts milk into. I mean, without getting too anatomically explicit, it, it, it is. I mean, hey. Garrett's hair is... I, I don't know if I actually have hair envy. I don't know if I'd want to have to spend that much time on my hair. That's why I <laughs> cut it this short. You know, wet it down, maybe put a little bit of product in it, and out the door. That, that, that's my thing. But, but yeah, he rocks the hair. The best hair game out of all music YouTubers. Garrett Brickley. You're loving it. Well, I try to please my viewers. What can I say? I'm only halfway through my regular hour of live stream, and I'm. this is all of my lunch that I have left. That I have left. That was a weird emphasis on that sentence, wasn't it? What should we talk about? Does anybody have any questions? What's my favorite band? Hmm. It's always a hard thing because it, it depends on what mood I'm in, obviously. But uh, one of the, a band that uh, very few people know about that I like to turn people on to that I think they would enjoy is a band called the Connells, uh, C-O-N-N-E-L-L-S. They were out of uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, and they, they were together from mid-'80s to early-2000s. Uh, I think most of their albums are out of print. Uh, they were on kind of an independent label, TVT Records. But... Uh, Kind of, they were most compared to uh, REM, but uh, I really, really enjoyed them. They're a, a huge sentimental favorite of mine. Uh, so, yeah, give them a try. The first album I ever owned on CD. I, I, I'm not sure exactly because I, when I first got a CD player, I just started buying CDs a lot. But I know it's like the first six or seven, and I'll have to. It's in my CD collection video, but I will answer since we're here talking live. One of them was definitely uh, Weird Al Yankovic's Dare to Be... No, um, even worse. Weird Al Yankovic's Even Worse. Another one would have been this, the uh, debut album Awake in a Dream by a band called Eleven. If you love rock, 
check out 11. They made five albums over the course of their uh, years. They are no longer a band, but they are awesome. Their first album, A Week in a Dream, was on Morgan Creek Records. So give that one a try. I do a discography of 11 back in the early days of my channel. It's still up. Check it out. And let's see what else uh, I did. I bought a uh, John Williams and the Boston Pops collection. It was a collection of his uh, famous movie themes and other compositions. So that's uh, and all three of those CDs and a few of the other ones that I bought in my first batch, I still own to this very day. And this was 35 years ago. So my CD collection goes way back. David Bowie, I, I like his singles. I have Aladdin Sane. And of course, being an 80s kid, I have Let's Dance, the album. So yeah, but I, I haven't been able to really get much into David Bowie. Well, I, I'm not sure why. Yeah, I haven't been able to get into him, even though everything that I've listened to from him is good. What do I like better, records or CDs? You know, uh, I grew up with CDs, so that's my sentimental fallback favorite format. But in the last few years since I replaced my stereo and got a fancy turntable, I've been getting more and more into records. And I've actually I've actually turned a corner and that I am starting to buy albums that I already own on CD on vinyl and getting rid of the CDs. So so that's a turning point. I'm I'm really getting in, into vinyl. Uh, I do need to do a, an updated record collection video. I, I did that one way back shortly after I started my channel and I've got way more records now. So yeah, I'll have to do that for Jack and for everybody else. I've been buying more records this year, I think, than CDs. And I should have kept track of it last year to see if this was actually true, but I, it feels like last year I bought more records than CDs, or it was about even. Uh, but yeah, I, I am turning the quarter into a, uh, a vinyl fanatic that uh, five years ago, I never thought I would have loved uh, going back to vinyl, so yeah. Do you think physical media will ever go away? No, I don't think so. Everybody's been decrying the death of uh, CDs you know, ever since MP3 started, and I don't know, I don't know if you'd say they're still going strong, but they're still going. It is no problem to find CDs. There, there have been a few artists lately that uh, I have been wanting to get the CDs of, but they uh, never put out their album on CD. So, a few artists are starting to stop putting their albums out on CD. But uh, I don't think everybody is going to want to stop buying physical media of some sort. I'm buying more records now than I had been in years past and I'm buying fewer CDs, more new releases that I'm getting, I, I buy on, on LP rather than CD. So I don't think physical media will ever totally die. No. Streaming is convenient. I, I have a streaming account. I stream music when I want to. One good thing about streaming is if you stream, stream something and you know you like it enough, then you can go out and buy it. So you'll, you're extra sure that you're spending your money on something that you will enjoy for a while. So that's one upside of streaming. But the downside is that it's, uh, well, I'm sure it's led to decreased record and CD sales. So, oh, my favorite Prince song. Gosh. God, he had so many. Let's Go Crazy. I really like that one. Oh, he had a lot of singles before he really started making it big. I didn't realize that. Uh, 1999, I like that one, even though it's now dated. Uh, Delirious. I love Delirious. That's that's in my top three. Uh, when Does Cry. That's cool. That one's good. Raspberry Beret, I mentioned that one. So I'd have to say uh, definitely in my top three would be uh, Delirious, uh, Let's Go Crazy, and probably probably 1999, Raspberry Beret would probably be number four. So that is my approximate ranking of my favorite Prince songs. Do I like Adele and Kelly Clarkson? Uh, both, actually, yeah. I, I actually I have all three of Adele's albums. I only have one of Kelly Clarkson's studio albums and her Greatest Hits collection. And, oh, and her Christmas album. So I, I don't collect a lot of uh, Kelly Clarkson, but I really enjoy her stuff. Yeah. Yes, Miron, I have uh, Kelly's first album, Thankful is the name of it. And I actually found the a uh, an import edition, uh, you know, a non-U.S. edition of her greatest hits, which has three or four extra tracks that the American edition doesn't have. So. What genres do I like to listen to the most? It usually ends up with uh, pop and rock the various subgenres in that spectrum, you know. Sometimes I listen to jazz. First artist I really got into was probably Weird Al, Weird Al Yankovic, a, a strange artist to be for the first example, but it was I actually did uh, in in 
was it in high school or junior high, we had to do reports in our English class or something. And my report was on Weird Al Yankovic. Does, does that just scream Tom or what? But, uh, but um, my, my holy trinity, as uh, I would say, of my 80s artists is uh, Huey Lewis in the News, Men at Work, and Duran Duran. And probably my favorite of all three of those is Duran Duran. Men at Work would kind of be a very, very close second because I've followed Colin Hay's solo career since Men at Work, and I love his solo stuff. So, But yeah, my, my second place answer would probably be Duran Duran. So. Rush, yeah, I, I have tried a couple of times to get into Rush, and uh, and I like a few of their songs, but uh, and I, I do have one of their albums, but it was a freebie from the freebie shelf at Hussa Records, and that's the only reason I picked it up. So yeah, I have not actually bought any Rush albums yet. But uh, the one thing that's keeping me from really enjoying them is Geddy Lee's voice is kind of high-pitched, <clears throat> and it's unusual for a rock band to have a high-pitched singer voice. Yeah. But hopefully, if, if I keep gently prodding myself listening to Rush, maybe it'll, they'll grow on me, I think. Hmm. A critically acclaimed album from last year you just don't get. Now, if, you, if the question were from last decade, I tried, and I'm sure I've mentioned this before, I tried to listen to To Pimp a Butterfly by Kendrick Lamar, and I could not get into it. It was like at the top of everybody, everybody's decade list, but I just could not get it. I would have to go over a list of albums from last year. Some of the worst albums from my favorite artists. That's an interesting question. Let's see. Uh, the Connells is a rock group out of North Carolina that I'm a huge fan of. They've been inactive for almost 20 years, I think. Uh, but their, their least impressive album, in my opinion, was called Weird Food and Devastation. Interesting name for an album. Kind of an interesting album. Oh, and McFly is a... Uh, British pop rock band that I really enjoy, and uh, their food, their their album uh, "Above the Noise," I just did not like that. that they tried to go in an electro pop direction, and that didn't work. The longest album I've ever listened to in one sitting. Wow, that would probably be Kamasi Washington's "The Epic," because that was a three LP set, but it was good. I mean, that that's good stuff that. You just kind of, you, you feel your stress level go down when you listen to that kind of thing. He's just a killer saxophone player, and it's just, that's a great jazz album. That was in my May backtracks. Oh, a Ryan question. Looking back on the 80s, do you believe One Hit Wonders were better than the staple bands or artists or the other way around? Hmm, that's a good question. I think that the, the staple or the, uh, you know, consistent artists were probably the better just because, especially in the 80s, a lot of the one-hit wonders were really, for lack of a better word, kind of novelty-type uh, songs, like uh, Come On Eileen by the De by Dexie's Midnight Runners. That was a really good song, but it was so unique that I don't think they could have sustained. I mean, they made it. They made two or three albums, yeah, but I don't think they could have sustained the prominence since Come On Eileen was such a unique song. And... Can't think of any other examples. I mean, Mickey by Tony Basil was, that yeah, was an okay song. It was really catchy. But again, yeah, same thing. I just don't think how she would have been able to maintain. Do I like K-pop? Not really. I actually liked, for a while there, I went through a brief J-pop phase, which is Japanese pop. And it's, it's fun, but after you've heard a certain amount of it, it's like, okay, I'm done with that, sort of. Which is probably, I've never really tried K-pop. I've never tried... Uh, was it BTS or any of those? Probably just because I, that would probably be my reaction again. I'd listen to them for a few hours and it's like, okay, I'm done. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's lots of fun to listen to, but the fun would be short lived for me. That's what I'm trying to say. Do I have any aspirations of owning a record store? One day? I don't know. There, there are the downsides that come with owning your own business. So that would be, uh, that would turn me off of it. But if, if my income didn't depend on it, I would probably love owning a record store. So if I win the lottery one day and open a record store, there we go. And uh, another fear, fear with owning a record store is I would probably want to keep so much of what I buy from sellers for myself that I wouldn't have anything to sell to the public. So. Describe your greatest adventure. Let's see. 
was it the trip that I took with my sister, her husband, his son, and my brother to Florida. We went to uh, Disney World. We, we went by car. We didn't fly. And this was when we lived in California. So all the way across the entire country by car. And we, <clears throat> my brother-in-law was, well, cheap is a harsh word, um, frugal. That's, that's the diplomatic word for it. Uh, and so we did not stay in hotels. We slept on the side of the road, you know, pu you know, pulled over at night, slept in the car on the side of the highway, which was probably really safe. Uh, and we had a camper trailer with us and we just stayed instead of staying in a hotel, like the Disney world hotel or anything, we got, went to a little campground and pitched up. So it's one of those, uh, camper trailers that's folds flat, but comes up and folds, you know, opens up into a tent. We all stayed in, in that little tent. Uh, what, what was that? Uh, for five of us in the summer in Florida. So yeah, it wasn't humid at all. So yeah, it was because sleep was not plentiful. You know, it's not easy to sleep on the side of the road. At least for me, it isn't, or to sleep in a very, very warm, humid tent at night with mosquitoes flying in your ears and all that stuff. Uh, because we didn't get a lot of sleep that vacation, it was not terribly fun. But I did come home with a souvenir that I still, actually a couple of souvenirs that I still have to this day. Let me hang on. Please stand by, I'll be right back. <clears throat> okay, I can't find the other one. But uh, The other one I was trying to look for was a record. But uh, Figment, this is the uh, name of the, the mascot at... One of the Epcot um, attractions that is probably no longer there. Maybe it is still there. But uh, isn't he cute? And yes, I've had him for a long time. But uh, yeah, at some point I'll show you the other thing that I was trying to look for, uh, frantically searching for over there just now. But, uh, it was a record album. It was actually the, the official album for Epcot. Epcot had actually just opened within uh, less than a year before we were there. So... Uh, you can look it up and see for yourself how long ago that was. I rubber stamp my age on my forehead. Um, but yeah, I've got that record album and Figment. I did have some good memories of that trip. It was a little difficult actually getting through it at the time. We were both we were all kind of grumpy because of lack of sleep. Um, you know, still good memories. Anything with my sister is good memory. This is my iPod, my iPod Touch which I, when I worked at the office, I would go, you know, listen to it every day on my lunchtime walk and my walk back to the bus at the end of the day. So, but now it doesn't get much listening. And that one was, <laughs> oh, I can tell you guys a really interesting story. Okay. My first iPod was a classic right here. And I had it for a long time. Well, I still have it, obviously. And uh, at one point after coming back from a trip from Portland, looked all over, couldn't find it anywhere, looked in all the bags that I had taken and couldn't find it. So I decided, okay, we left it in the hotel room or, dro or I dropped it somewhere or something. So we decided, okay, got to go buy myself a new iPod. So I bought the iPod Touch that I just showed you a minute ago. About a year later, I'm going through this... Um, toiletries bag, you know, the, the bath, bathroom bag that you put your shampoo and your toothpaste and all that stuff in. And in one of the pockets of that bag, there was my old iPod. It was there all along, and I never looked through that, never completely looked through that bag. Excuse me. And that thing had so many friggin' zippers and pockets and hidden compartments and stuff. I decided since it had basically swallowed my iPod for a year without me knowing it. Uh, it was time to get rid of that bag and get something simpler, more scaled down. So yeah, I, I had a grudge against that bag. That's why I got rid of it. So, so now I have a spare iPod. <laughs> my second greatest. <laughs> oh, my second greatest adventure. Hmm. Probably my second greatest adventure was seeing Weird Al live a couple of years ago. Front row. I had a front row seat. Go look up my Weird Al Week videos, and the final video in that week was uh, a recap of my attendance at his uh, ridiculously self-indulgent, ill-advised vanity tour. It was amazing. 
they had uh, because I was VIP. I, I went and splurged the mega bucks and got the VIP uh, ticket. Um, they had a Weird Al Jeopardy thing at the beginning for the VIP guests, and I actually went on stage and took part in it. So, and I was the runner-up. I know my Weird Al trivia. Don't mess with me with Weird Al trivia. I'll, I'll kick your. I got to meet Al. Yes, after thirty-five years of being a fan of his, I finally got to meet him. And I got, my sister had this book in her collection because she's, she was a school teacher. And so most people were taking CDs, books, and all that stuff with them for Al to autograph because he was going to sign one item for you. And got him to sign the book. So not only is it a connection for my Weird Al fandom, but it's a connection to my sister. And yeah, Al was just the nicest guy. He was amazing. And that's exactly what I told him was, um, I, I think I told him I waited 35 years for a concert like this and I was not the least bit disappointed. And he was very gracious, very happy to, you know, shook my hand. I didn't want to wash my hand after he shook it, but well, you know, hygiene. But uh, yeah, and I, I got pictures. I think I showed the picture of me meeting the photos that I got taken with, with, with Al in that uh, ridiculously self-indulgent, ill-advised vanity tour recap. So go check it out. So that was my second greatest adventure. Please don't ask me what my third greatest adventure is, because I spend all day wondering. Just yeah, I'm just kind of a listener. Oh, hang on. Yeah, I'm okay. Okay. Well, guys, uh, emergency here. Well, non-life emergency. I need to sign off uh, real quick here. So, uh, I hope you guys had fun. Sorry to cut this short. Uh, maybe I'll make up for it next Wednesday. So, bye, guys. Take care. Love you. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, see you next Wednesday. Bye.